So to be sure that you're going to get a good drawing when you finally finish, you have to go through a little bit of a planning process. And one of the things that that uh, Andrew Loomis used to say was, if a painting or drawing is worth painting, then it's worth planning. So we're going to take a little bit of time, maybe about an hour on the front end, to prepare your actual drawings. So what you're going to do is you're going to create 10 little boxes on your sketchbook paper, um, about credit card size, roughly, um, and in the orientation that you want your piece to be in. So if, you, if you're going to do a vertical piece, all these need to be vertical. If you're going to do them horizontal in the end, then it needs to be horizontal. Now what you're going to do is look at your still life that you have set up, and I've set up a few basic objects, um, really simple still life. And I'm just going to go through and stay in the same spot and create a bunch of variations on how this could be composed. I never want to just plop the entire still life dead, in, dead center in the page and draw everything. Right? I want to crop it interestingly, have stuff running off the edge of the page, and create an interesting design in a two-dimensional sense. And so when you spend about 30 seconds to one minute per thumbnail, it's, it's really easy to do that. And all you're focusing on here is you're making compositional decisions. You don't need to worry about the structure that much. You just need to know where things interact with the edges of the page. Um, and that's basically the most important set of decisions that you can make. So what you're going to do is you're going to kind of think through your uh, compositions as you create these little thumbnail drawings. And 10 is always a good number because it forces you to get bored and to be really creative about it after a while. So here I'm only going to do five in the interest of time and show you how to choose between them. So on this fifth one, what, I'm, what I've been kind of doing is using the little ball that I have in my still life as the anchor and, and thinking about moving that around and how that affects the edge of everything. You can also think about the horizon line or any particular object or, or certain shadows or whatever. The most important thing is that you're thinking in terms of how is how is this going to carry all the information and is the piece already interesting to look at from this stage. If it's not interesting to look at in a thumbnail, the chances of it being interesting in the end are pretty slim. And one of the problems that you usually will run into is that you like two thumbnails equally or you just can't decide between them. So the way that you're going to fix that is uh, you're going to actually do a little value plan on, on both of them. And you're just going to put a tone over all the areas that are in shadow. Um, you're not going to differentiate the tone because what you're looking for is the essentially like a tone map for it. And so you only need to know what's dark and what's light. And once you put out this distribution map of where the tone is going to go, it should be very obvious what's what the more interesting piece is going to be. In this case, the one that I just finished is the one that I wound up with debating between the that and the third one that I did. So you'll see on this third one that the value map just really isn't that interesting. It, it kind of weights everything towards the top and leaves this weird blank spot at the bottom. So um, the other one didn't have those problems, and that's the one we'll develop a little more. 